Hey! <laughs> you won't believe it! I'm just all geared up to a little bit of a patio tour, a lot of a patio tour. I've got time today. Look! <laughs> I thought I was going to beat the rain. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm up here for the time being undercover. The lofty heights next to me is Stan the Man. But I thought this is a great vantage point to actually show you what is going on pretty much from a distance <laughs> on the patio. So happy that you're here. I'm going to see if I can do this even while it's raining. While I'm still undercover, in the distance there, you will see my Gloriosa lilies, all beautiful, coming up nicely. I think I have 11 coming up, which is awesome. Happy to see that. I moved them over here because I have a feeling that last year they were the culprit for the thrips infestation, possibly mites as well. So they have been relegated to the east side, up against the hedge, far away from the west side and the indoor orchids that I'm trying to make sure won't die. But they're doing well over here, getting plenty of light nonetheless. We've got Blatia striata bowl over there. I've got a seed pot on that. Everything I wanted to show you up close and maybe we'll get to that if the rain stops and I don't look like a wet raccoon afterwards. <laughs> And then we've got the Cymbidium and the Fias. There's not much rain anticipated today, so I'm not concerned about flooding the pots. They can stay in their masks. I don't have to remove anything. It's just one of those beautiful days where if you had time, you would want to go to the beach. The one day that you're not inundated with a lot of things to do, you would want to go to the beach and then it rains. Same here. On my patio, I thought, oh, I'm going to do a tour, whether it takes an hour, an hour and a half. I don't care. I'm going to do the tour. Open mic. There's going to be a lot of noise pollution as well, but I was so in the mood just to talk to you oh, and breathe and breathe. Anyway, I do not have a dead cat on my mic, which means there could be even more background noise. But I took it off this time around because every time I edit those videos on my open mic, I feel as though I'm in some kind of a tank, in an aquarium of sorts. I wanted to see how the audio behaves without it, seeing as it's not windy. We shall see. I hope it's going to be okay. Anyway, Selogeny pandorata is yonder, has a fantastic new growth coming. I'm not sure we're going to see blooms, hasn't had enough light. But then there's the staging area right over there with my Encyclia Garciana Alba. And I wanted to show you two orchids with new growth, which is my Wabash Valley and my Lelia Perinii. Both are on the move. Underneath, I've got, of course, my Luripiculus Lelias, the Kautskiana, the Flava, and the Briageri on the right, and Roy Tokonaga as well. And the Maxillaria tenuifolia is going to bless us with some blooms. And I'm thinking, Last year I had like 10, 11 blooms. This time around I'm only seeing six, maybe seven. You know, I go cross-eyed when I try to count spikes and blooms and all that business. Maybe she needs a little bit more time and then we can have a proper show. It would be disappointing to only get six blooms out of that orchid. So then to the right here in the lofty heights, yes, I'm stood on a chair, <laughs> are my Ancelia Africanas, which at this point in time are drinking a lot. They're getting a lot of nutrients, trying to encourage them, telling them it's grow time. Hello. Ooh, thunder. Ooh, we may have to abort, abort, abort this tour because where there's thunder, there's lightning, and I'm holding onto metal equipment. Ooh, not a good mix. Anyway, so let's just finish the start of the tour and yeah, we'll see. So yeah, hopefully growing new growth. I thought I saw some new growth and then I'm thinking, ah, you just want them to grow new growth. You're imagining things. Anyway, the fact that they're drinking so, so much at the moment that to me means something is on the move very, very soon. And I'm up here, lofty heights, as I said, I'm standing on a chair with Stan the Man, who is also drinking a lot, considering where he is on the east side with a lot of airflow, lots of dry air. He needs a lot of water and he gets it every day. Very, very spiky, very spiny, can do some serious damage if you're not careful. He will let you know, don't touch me. 
Anyway, it looks like it has stopped raining. No, it hasn't. So what I'm going to do is go inside. Like I said, where there's thunder, there's lightning. I'll be back when the conditions are a little bit more favorable when handling electronics. <laughs> I hope you'll stick around because, you know, the edit doesn't take that long. Thank you. So, yeah, I was hoping to do a rain vlog. Well, it got a little bit nasty-er yesterday, and this is a new day. Throughout the afternoon, I had a little bit of difficulty continuing with my video. Here we are, back in my lofty heights, and what a difference a day makes! Check this out. We're supposed to have rain again today, but hey, <laughs> the orchid gods are with us. So we're going to continue our little tour in beautiful sparkly sunshine. So I'm going to go down from my lofty heights. There's King. Hello, King. Are you good boy? You good boy. Yes, you are. You're a good boy. Sorry, did I just poke you in the eye? I know, me and cameras and coordination, huh? Okay, good boy. And there's Baloo. Balooski, everybody's out in full force, including the trucks. Anyway, let's look at some of the Tolumnias here. They're getting new growth, and I have as yet to put them on the West Trellis. That is because, yeah, well, yesterday they had to come inside. The temperatures dropped radically. So still not out where they belong for the summer season. We're getting close, though, and I am so glad in a way because some were starting to look like they were getting crawlers again. So I am monitoring them very, very carefully. Now, this one has a little bit of a stunted growth. It looks like it's fully formed because right here is the next new growth and here is another new growth coming. And for that reason, <laughs> I think this one's fully developed considering it didn't have much to work with, but we've got a fantastic new root system coming. So there's that on that one. Not so positive developments here with my pink brisht. We've lost this lead completely. Tried very hard to save it didn't work out. We've got a trial of a spike coming. I'm waiting for this spike to bud out before I actually go ahead and cut it. Open mic still again today. Sorry for any background noise. I can't edit out. But I've been very, very careful watching if scale is trying to get at it. But yeah, I want to cut the spike. This orchid needs a rest. This one is still in beautiful bloom though. This is awesome. Let me remind you, this is Red Devil. Gorgeous. And also has one of the better root systems as well. This one had crawlers down in here. So I took care of that. I would have missed them if they had been on the west side. So I guess there is a balance between the positive side of not being able to put all of them where they belong as soon as I wanted to because I would have missed those crawlers. My Ostedia is doing fabulously, getting hundreds, <laughs> a bit of an exaggeration, but let's just say anything short of 25 to 30 new growths, it is doing great. I'm losing that one growth that seemed to have rotted out at the base. That is slowly dwindling, but the rest of the orchid is just going bonkers with new growths. I'm not expecting many, many blooms this season, but the fact that all these growths are shooting out this orchid is going to go back to strength again. That is what we need during these growing months. Get the orchids back to strength so that they can somehow endure the winter once again. My Dendrobium antenatum is getting some spikes. I got the example of one that is easy to access. My area hyacinthoides here, she is outside for the first time in many, many seasons, but we just repotted her. I want her to have a lot of light so that she can root in. I can see five new growths in total. So out here for the time being, she doesn't get any direct sun. And this area of the patio, which is an extension of the deep south now. The reason being, nothing really fits anymore. I thought I had plenty of space, but 
the configuration is off. Anyway, we'll get over there shortly. I wanted to show you my Schweinfortianum. Doesn't normally live here, but we haven't seen this orchid in a very, very long time. Three new growths, two of which are already really well underway. I have some spotting here that I'm not pleased with. So the garlic alcohol treatment went. It looks like maybe some thrips tried. We're gonna get ahead of that very, very quickly. So garlic alcohol treatment and everything has already happened and another new growth is coming at the base. We move her out of the way because we haven't seen my Podangus dactylothera for a very long time either. Now, this one is doing well. I have her here protected by the berry odor so she doesn't get direct sun, but this is a nice little humid environment. You can see everything is still wet from the rain yesterday. Next to her, I have my gorgeous, gorgeous Jumelia arborescence getting a bit top heavy. So she's not where she normally lives in the deep south because if it gets windy, ha, that metal grating, I'm a little bit concerned about it. But all her pups down here are growing fantastically. Super happy. I've got one, two, three, four plantlets. I call them pups, but they are growing brilliantly. I love seeing this. When I got my Jamelia back in 2020, she was maybe this size, like the pup right here. She wasn't even this big, but anyway, you can see her development. Oh, and a fifth pup is coming right there. That is, oh, so happy. She's gonna be blooming for us beautifully. I do expect blooms from her. She is also growing a bit wonky. So I'm hoping that this location here will straighten her main stem out a little bit. So I don't want her reaching for the light. I don't need this orchid to get wonky, otherwise her little container is going to be obsolete. We're going to have problems. I've still got my Prismarta copper right here after the repot. My Myrmecophila Thomsonia is getting new roots. Those are the only two that are at the surface. Everything else is happening in the pot. And well, cousin it is just basking in the sunshine late afternoon perma shade during the day because I don't want him to get more stress after the intense, intense cold burn that he got in the last winter. So he is going bonkers with new growths and as is my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum going mad. New roots at the moment and the growths are just growing longer and longer and longer. I have supported them with a wire to the hedge because if it gets windy, I don't want those root tips to get damaged or bruised. But every single little plantlet, keiki, whatever, that grew in 2022 has now got its own root system. So for example, here's one. It grew out of the main stem and it has two roots. Here's another, grew out of the main stem, has two roots. Yes, I was doing cartwheels around the patio last year I was too happy prematurely. <laughs> I thought they were spikes. It turned out to be more new growth. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I've never gotten this orchid to bloom. Goodness me though, she is big enough. That is for sure. So Tibicinus is right here, not growing any new growth just yet, but also like in perma shade, just because this orchid didn't get much sun during the winter and I don't want to burn the leaves. And you can see how much light she's getting because she is still that burgundy color. Beautiful to see that my Renatanda Sunrise has got two new roots growing, much, much needed. And then my Oncidesa Sweet Sugar has two new growths coming as well. But what's bothering me here, even though all the fertilizing is dialed in, is the white striations that I've got in the leaves. I have no idea what is going on there. But the growths are growing, new roots are growing, still on the mount from when I got this orchid from Mienza Orchids and ADD. Next to that is my Gold Coast. She is growing a new growth. Very happy to see that because the growth that grew during the winter was puny. And then the pièces de résistances here on the deep south are my two Angrecoids. I don't see any root action just yet on my Bossery, but she is growing beautifully, be it slowly. 
just checking to see that I don't get any scale into the crown there. So she got rained on yesterday, but I do see some spotting. So I may need to give a little paint job with garlic alcohol there. Don't like that. I'm seeing little white bits down in there. Could be dust, could be debris, but could be, could be. We won't know. My tomorrow star is, wow, the leaf that we had just like, you know, half size when the orchid came outside. First time for 2023. Uh, <laughs> look at this. Fantastic. Standing up on its own and the next new leaf is coming but absolutely no, no sign of any branching on the roots, be they old, anything coming out new, none of that. The rain yesterday will have done it a world of good though. And then I have a Rinka Stylus Cerula cross hybrid Vanda that is right in the back, which is a semi-hydro setup. And yeah, as per usual, the roots want to grow, then they stop. The orchid is still alive. I'm losing some leaves, but the growth point, I'm okay with seeing what I'm seeing. She's just there in the most brightest shade that I can give her. Never gets direct sun because, yeah, I want this orchid to be at least one of the Vandas I will have left. She was the first one to come into my collection. Maybe one day we'll get some blooms and maybe I'm asking too much, but thank goodness she's still around. And here are some of the masks that accumulated rain overnight. Didn't want the pots to flood, so orchids came out of their masks just to make sure that we don't get flooded roots. And then over here we have the beautiful trio of Rainbow Forest. It's a Vanda Rainbow Forest, no ID. That's the label she came with. Growing some new roots. My little weirdo, Neostylus Lucneri Blue. The root growth is starting to stop, if that makes sense. Typical, because the temperature's warm. We've got some Rincostylus in there. Rincostylus, roots, Nina, Southern Spain. We are not a good recipe, but growing, growing nicely. We'll have some more weird blooms, hopefully, late winter next year. <laughs> and here's my classic Neostylus Lucneri. Not really doing anything much. There is no activity on any root front, but I am going to move her right now because I don't want this one to burn. I'm not saying that she would, but again, huh. This makes me feel a lot more comfortable and we will be visiting the Blooming Alley when we call it a wrap. Moving back to the west side, these two can hang out while I finish with our totem pole over here. This totem pole is going absolutely nuts with root branching, new roots growing from the main stem. I have two spikes on my Papilionanthe. I don't have any spikes on the new growths after the main stem, the main orchid cracked. We've got two growths that emerged because of the cracks, one left and one right. No spikes to see at all, but goodness me, is she busy on the root front. And what a sight to behold. What a sight. Root tips galore. Roots starting to break through the stem, branching as I mentioned. I couldn't be happier. Whether I'm going to see any child prior blooms on the new parts of the growth, I have no idea, but wouldn't it be quite magnificent? Because they smell like blueberry sugar candy and they last a very, very long time. But I'm so happy to see how my Papilionanthe is progressing because the new roots on that one are just insane. Thick, delicious, gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful, chartreuse, bright green. Oh, amazing. That root that I'm highlighting right now is not even absorbing any water yet. It's not done yet because right up here, we've got two more of those gorgeous monsters coming out. Ah. Oh. A beautiful sight. So my totem pole, all in all, is doing fabulously. Just great. Maybe it doesn't look the part. I wouldn't win any awards with it, but I just love, love the progress. Can you believe that there is a massive crack right in here? 
and look at what's going on at the top. It's just growing. I really want to encourage roots to grow in this part of the stem so I can be sure that she's going to survive. But for now, this is what we've got. And I'm just amazed. I'm six foot. This totem pole with the orchid, top to bottom, even though she has lost leaves at the bottom, I've been cleaning her up, is six foot. Looks higher because she's perched a little bit on one of these stands. She's up a little bit. If I took her off the stand, she would be right next to me, six foot tall. Just amazing. And in three short years, these growths have grown to this size. After the storm, zzz, plural, because I have two cracks in the main stem. I am mm, over the moon. Let's go to the blooming alley. I have two spikes on my Tulumnia hoxonia. Fantastic, that's one more than last year. I have a new growth on my zombie brassavola that survived because of this organic mount. There's one. There's another one tucked in behind a little further up. We still have the root tip of our brassavola flagellaris after its radical mounting thing. <laughs> I've got to make sure I don't lose track of where my mic is. And we have two new growths coming on Hawiara Lava Burst and new roots to boot which is always exciting. This orchid was also rescued thanks to the inorganic mount, the innovative thought of Michael McCarthy to use a scrubby pad as an alternative to the very expensive EpiWeb. My Dendrobium seraula is in bud, but because we had a very cold night, some are already blasting. And then in the comments below, would you please Give me any suggestions as how you would go about removing this orchid from this mount, which has been on this mount for five years. It is tucked into crevices. It is a rock solid. It's growing new roots. <laughs> I would like to separate this and get it onto its own mount because also the blooms are super, super sensitive to water and I have to mist our monster mount above with the Dendrobium of Film Cakies. But look at this. Let me know your suggestions much needed on how to remove this orchid from this mount. And with that, I'm also wanting to remove my Ceratolabium, which is this orchid right here. But I have to start with Seraula. I can't get to the Ceratolabium until this one's gone but she is so rock solid in here. I have no idea, so any suggestions you may have without destroying the orchid entirely, I would be really, really grateful. An orchid I'm so impressed with is my Dendrobium exile. It's starting a new growth, extending older growths, branching on other growths, etc. just going bonkers and I'm loving it. I love the structure of this orchid. Gorgeous. Unicum. What a beautiful, bright pop of orange. And the fragrance, ooh, divine. Tangerine, warm apricots, you name it. It's also getting a new growth. Recently mounted Dendrobium bensonniae, rocking it for the time being. Clearly, there wasn't really much damage done. It's still on the old mount while I just screwed all that onto the new mount. And then Polyanthem is expanding on the buds. That one's going to be mounted on cork as well, so subscribe to the channel if you want to follow that process. But it's already too far gone, the buds are way extended, and I'm not risking this blooming of this orchid that smells like licorice by putting it on a mount now. The roots, if they were to come from the new growth, which it is chucking out everywhere, they can come afterwards and they'll go through that moss before they hit the new cork. My beautiful Dendrobium Victoria Regina is in bloom yet again. The second flush of other canes. Yes, there's three different types on here. The blooms all vary, but I don't mind. I've got a very deep, rich purple variety. Then I have one that pales a little bit more and has a little bit more of the spotting, like puppy tail spotting at the end of the petals and sepals. And then I have one that is that much paler even. These two varieties are now in bloom. The deep variety has already bloomed out. So <laughs> this is awesome. 
growing roots like cuckoos as well. Fantastic. Recently mounted Twinkle, I'm doing great. Well, it's only been a few days, so there's not much to report there. My Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum has another flush of blooms, but I don't have any new growth just yet. These are the only two blooms that we had on this flush, but enough already. It didn't grow a new growth last year. This year, I want to see new growth. So get with the program here, Dendrobium tetragonum variety giganteum. Dendrobium tortile has given me several blooms, none of the spectacle that we had last year. Hakuna Matata, a few blooms is better than none. I'm expecting quite the show come 2024 from all the canes that are now beautifully in leaf. I've got five new growths coming on her from what I can see. I wish I had six to be honest because five is her standard. I want this orchid to just keep going from, you know, adding a new growth every year. Still have Ancelia Africana Buffalo crossed with Leo in bloom. Yes, I said this last time as well. They are fading, but ooh, they're fading very slowly. <laughs> nice, nice. My Renanthera Citrina is in bloom. A very sorry little spike for the size and maturity of that orchid. But you know what? She doesn't get enough light during the winter, so four blooms is what you get out of her. I had her once branching with a long lush spike, etc. Those days are over, but you know, Citrina in bloom, even if it's just four, I'll take it. Still got my Nobili in bloom. Beautiful Frisia fragrance still in the cul-de-sac of the blooming alley. <laughs> The blooms are dropping though. New growths are already underway, so fertilizing is going full speed. And then the beautiful Epidendrum radicans that I got from Into Orchids and ADD is blooming beautifully as they do. Beautiful red color, I love it. Also with the contrast with the sunshine. My Chantilly Lace Twinkle, hmm. Second flush of new roots coming. This orchid, this orchid. But any positive sign of life from her and I will take it. Then we've got the gorgeous Zygopetalum as well, still in bloom. So between Freesia, I've got cinnamon, sugar and spice and everything nice from the Zygo. Then I've got my Leptotis bicolor, starting to lose some blooms, but still looking wonderful. So cute right here smelling of vanilla. I'm telling you, it's very spicy here in the blooming alley at the moment. And much and long anticipated buds of my white bridal covered by ants because she's got the happy sap thing going, but they are still looking really good. A little bit of a leaf canopy above those buds. I'm just going to let the orchid try and figure it out. If I have to intervene and move a few growths back to create more space, I will do that without popping any buds off, of course. And then my two hibiki pieces, they are also coming into bud, not yet bud, but you know, the spikes of the clusters of blooms that we're going to get from her. They are very, very evident right now. So we'll have hibiki to look forward to. And then I want to tell you quickly about an accident that I had. Well, let's just say somebody had an accident right here on this top shelf. You can see I've moved these pots away because when I'm misting the mounts, I don't want everything to drip onto these pots just to regulate the water a little bit. But one morning I came down and I looked through the glass as I always do. Good morning, orchids, before I even come outside. And these three pots right here were facing me as I was coming down into the living room. While I was still indoors, I could see them all laid over facing me. That was a quick, quick wake-up call. Forget the coffee. Picked up all the lava rock. These two right here are rooted in. So this is Angareri and this is Enfelsii. They're rooted in. No problem. I just need to needed to put more lava rock around and, and they, we were good to go. But this is my long geeks crossed with Millery that I got from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. She is not rooted in. Her new growth is maturing and she is growing new roots. So this was panic stations because I don't want to be wobbling these orchids around while they're rooting. Otherwise they will abort the roots. So Fingers crossed that not much damage was done here. I can see a root nubbin in there, so that's a protected one. But we need all the roots we can get for this one. 
What a nightmare, what a mess. I have no idea what caused these pots to tilt. I know that I'm long-winded. I told you at the beginning of the video. <laughs> it's just so good to stand out here, take some time and breathe, enjoy and talk to you. So, a few more updates just down right at the bottom row here. My Bulbophyllum plumatum that I got from Matt by Nature is coming into bloom. This is her second spike. The first spike aborted. And I can't tell you why. I'm guessing it was too cold when that spike started. Didn't stop the orchid at all. She's pushed out a second spike straight away and said, I'm going to bloom by hook or by crook. And here we are. They're going to open very, very soon. My Contortisepalum is growing the best growth I have ever seen this orchid grow. And my Trias is still sleeping. Can't see any new growth there. And my Diana. That one growth that you can see, that grew during the winter. So the only thing I'm expecting now is new roots from that growth. Sorry about the bad lighting. New roots and I doubt we're going to have another new growth coming because this orchid does one per year. But I was surprised to see her do that during the winter. And I'm going to love and leave you with my Guarianthe guatemalensis still in gorgeous bloom. It's almost done blooming, I would say. I've lost one or two blooms already, but still, this is the money shot amongst others during this video. I hope that you found a lot of, lot of little bit of inspiration. And what I will do in a separate video, not today, not attach it to this one because it's been so long, I will pull things from the east side and from all around here because there's a lot of activity a lot of new growth, a lot of root action, all that fun stuff because it is time to flush a few orchids. And I'm so glad I didn't pull them out yesterday when it was raining because they could have had a wonderful flush, but I didn't want to risk the cold temperatures last night. So they stayed where they are, but they're growing so many new growths. When I have to flush them, we'll have a closer look at them as well. Meanwhile, if you're still here, it is the end of our quick tour. I know these tours aren't really quick. They do take up time, but I feel as though I'm rushing, even though I try not to. Anyway, if you're inspired, if you like what you saw, would you please give this video a like? Consider subscribing as well to the channel. I would so appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you have yourself a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.